Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice, and we will be glad in it. Happy Tuesday to you all. How are you doing on this beautiful, glorious day? And it's not just beautiful because the weather is nice, all right? It is a glorious and beautiful day because this is the day that God has blessed us with. And as they say all the time, make that decision to rejoice and be glad in it. Well, thank you so very much for joining here on this Tuesday morning devotional. How are you doing this morning? I hope your day is starting off grand. And if you're watching later, hope your evening or whenever you're watching, I hope everything is going well for you. My name is Pastor Danielle, and I am the lead pastor here at Christian Church for All Nations. And once again, thank you so very much for joining in on this Tuesday morning. We're going to get right in to open up with a time of prayer. And as I always say, if you have any prayer requests, if there's any prayer needs, whatever it may be, all you need to do is let us know in the comments how we can pray for you. We believe in the power of prayer. We're going to unite our faith together. We're going to pray and we're going to believe and we're going to seek the Lord with you. And also, as the Lord is answering those prayer requests, be sure to let us know because we want to rejoice with you. And we want to tell this world what our Lord is doing because you never know the impact of what you have went through and the journey and the praise report and the testimony. So please let us know. But let's open up in the time of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day, God. Lord, we thank you for this time where we can come on this platform to talk about you, to share in everyday life and things that we go through. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity. We lift up every need to you right now. Lord, I know that there are some I know that are going through situations that they need a healing in their body. So, Lord, we just thank you that you are the great physician. You are our healer. Lord, that you are also a provider for those who are in need provision, that you are the way maker, and Lord, that you're the restorer. So, God, whatever it may be, you know the details. I don't. But thank God that you know the details from the very top of our heads to the very soles of our You know every detail about us, and you know every detail about our situation. So, Lord, once again, we make the decision to take our hands off and to lift our hands up and say, Lord, we surrender it to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And this morning, just wanted to talk to you for just a few moments about how it went viral. Now, in this day and age of social media and all the different things, so many things have gone viral in our world. It just takes off and it just explodes all over. And then we're all talking about, oh my goodness, did you see that video? Did you see what happened? And the catchphrase is, it went viral. But when you think about it in this manner, things have been going viral for quite some time. Things have been going viral since biblical times. Because at, point, at points, guess what? Throughout Jesus's ministry, he did things that made him go viral. Now granted, that when he did things, there were people that loved what he had did. They loved to see the signs. They loved to see the miracles. They loved to see life change. But guess what? Not everyone was excited about what Jesus would do. And I wanna share with you for just a few moments about how Jesus story in Jesus's gospel, the gospels, that when Jesus went viral. And so go with me to the book of Mark. We're gonna look at a familiar passage of scripture, Mark 7, verses 35 through 37. And it was talking about a man that needed healing. And this story of this man I'm gonna share is dear to my heart because I dealt with something similar to what this man had dealt with. So in Mark 7, verses 35 through 37, it said, at once, the man was able to hear his speech impediment was removed and he began to talk without any trouble. Then Jesus ordered the people not to speak of it to anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they told about it. And all who heard were completely amazed. 
how he does everything, they exclaim. He even causes the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. And why this story just speaks to me so dearly. When I was younger, I had an issue with saying certain words and my tongue just couldn't grapple certain words and I was struggling with saying like words like yellow and things like that and I couldn't properly speak. And I remember particularly my dad's grandma, my dad's mom, and we would call her Big Mom B, that she would lay hands on my throat and command that the Lord would just loose my tongue so that I can speak clearly. And so this story rings true to me because I can identify with the fact that, no, I had a trouble speaking and thank the Lord for his healing touch for delivering me. But in this particular instance right here in the story that they brought this man, say this man, right here it says he couldn't hear and he couldn't speak and Jesus touched him and because Jesus touched him it went viral so we think this is a we just coined it as going viral this day and age but in that in Jesus's day and age this story one of many how he touched someone and people heard about it and Jesus went viral and so the thing is that Jesus like, don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone that I did. But again, the story read that the more he said, don't say anything, the more the people were astonished. So when I look at that word viral and the V and viral is for voice. And on this past Sunday, I talked about how we are to use our voice to be his voice. And we look at this man in the story that we don't know his name. We don't know much about him, but we know that he had a need. And he went and they, he was brought to Jesus because they heard about what Jesus was doing. Because why? Jesus had gone viral. This man had no voice. His friends had a voice. And his friends used their voice to bring and say, tell Jesus, like this man here, he has a need. And so they use their voice. They use their voice to do something powerful. They were a part of the process. And guess what, family? We can be a part of great God's great big picture that he has and that we all have a place in it. We all have a place in the body and we all have a voice. And I said, Sunday, how are we using this voice? What are we doing with the voice that he's placed us, given us? And maybe our voice is not as strong. Maybe it's weak. Maybe whatever, but we've got a voice. How are we going to use that voice? And I said again, as I say again today, use your voice to be his voice. And the I, when there's something that goes viral, guess what? It's going to ignite a firestorm and then as your voice is being used for the things of God as you speak forth the things of God yes it will ignite a firestorm but trust and believe that God is with you he has you surrounded he has you covered and so when the firestorm is ignited and yes as you speak forth his word you're going to ignite something Jesus ignited so many different things. He ignited firestorms and people were drawn, people from all sorts of walks of life. The Pharisees were drawn to this and they did not like what he was doing. But yes, the eye is for the ignition, igniting the firestorm, igniting the trail, being a trailblazer to light that path, to once more to go forth in the things of God and do the things of God. Yes, you, you are his chosen vessel you are called and you are chosen so v again use your voice to be his voice and yes there will be a fire there's going to be an ignition there's going to be an ignition of his fire storm. there's going to be an ignition of his holy spirit and thank the lord for that the r is to be relational jesus always was relational with the people that he encountered from the little kids to the woman at the well the demon possessed to the Pharisees. He always had time to take time and have relationships. Whether the people liked it or not, he was relational with the people. He spoke the truth to people. We are to speak the truth of God's word with the people that he's presented to us, that he's placed us within our circle. 
the A is when these viral things happen. Notice when things happen with Jesus. We just read that people were amazed. People were astounded. And that's what they, st they stated. They explained, and it says they were completely amazed by this miracle. And that's, the, that's what happened when Jesus had these miracles, when these miracles were happening. Yes, people were amazed. People were astounded. And then you had those that said, oh, this is absurd. They thought that that was absurd. So you're going to have all sorts of signs of the coin when something goes viral. And that's just like in this day when something goes viral, people can be amazed, they can be astounded, or they can say, well, oh my goodness, that was absurd. And the L for viral is to learn from Christ, lead like Christ, and lastly, to love like Christ. When you want something to think about it, when you think about something going viral, it's not about you, it's about what can I do to bring glory and honor to Jesus Christ? And I know in this day and age, people want things to go viral because that means they're going to get more likes, more subscribers, more followers, and the money's going to start to flow in. I don't want all of that. I just want people to see Jesus, to give, know that their lives can be forever changed. Jesus was not about you know, pumping himself up. He was meek. He was humble. And that's the difference between what we see in the viral aspect today where someone is trying to make a name for themselves. And here Jesus was in this story. He's like, don't tell anybody. Jesus, they want to heal you, but don't tell anybody. But the people that witnessed this viral event, they were just so amazed and so astonished that they had to tell someone. They had to say what they just witnessed, what they experienced, that they knew that this man who could not speak, who had, had no voice, who could not hear, was now had a great impact because he had an encounter. And could you imagine the story that this man would go back and tell others and share? And what was it about? Spreading the gospel message not about me making a name for myself, but it's about a kingdom mentality to say, Jesus, let your will be done. Lord, let us be a conduit to bring forth the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So again, I'm going to sum it up as we get ready to end this morning. And again, afterwards, I'll put this in the chat below. The V is the voice. Use your voice to be a voice. Realizing that as you use your voice to be his voice, that there is going to be, you're going to ignite a fire storm, but trust and believe and rest assured that Jesus is with you. He's got you covered. So when the fire storms happen, the fire storms happen to Jesus. We as his disciples, they're going to happen to us. R, be relational with people. Be real, relevant, and relational. The A, Realizing that people are going to be amazed by what happens, people are going to be astounded. And you will have those that say that what you're doing and what you're saying is absurd. But don't worry about those naysayers. And don't let the praises get to your head. Because remember, it's not about you. It's about you being a conduit for him. And the L, lastly, learn from Christ. Lead like Christ. Love like Christ. Well, thank you so very much for joining in on this morning. And remember, tomorrow night is Worship and the Word at 630. If you want to come a little bit early around 530-ish, there's time for cafe hour. And again, Sunday morning service at 11 a.m. We look forward to seeing you. Stay tuned for the rest of the week for more morning devotionals. Again, if you have prayer requests and prayer needs, let us know how we can pray for you. We believe in the power of prayer. God has got you covered. So take your hands off whatever it is that you may be dealing with. Say, Lord, I release it to you, and I'm going to trust you. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day that you've given us, this day that you've made. So Lord, we just thank you for this time that we had to spend together in these few moments. Now, Lord, as we go about our day, Lord, that you'll keep your hedge of protection around us, 
Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, that we're walking in divine authority that you've given us. And Lord, help us to remember to use our voice to be your voice with all that we encounter and all who we encounter. Let us bring Jesus to them. We thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Have an awesome day. Look forward to seeing you at service on tomorrow night. Bye.